Hello and happy Father's Day. Welcome to McLean Church Online. My name is Chris Norris. I'm the online site pastor here. First and foremost, a happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, including my dad, uh, who's likely tuning in to today's services. We are so grateful for all of you and the ways in which you raise up your families and your children in the name of Christ. Let's open God's word today for a special verse fitting for Father's Day from Psalm 103. It says this, 103 verse 13, the Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. You know, one thing I do most nights, depending on my level of exhaustion, but I'll go into my kids' rooms and I'll say a brief prayer. I will say, uh, I'll ask God for three things. I say, God, please um, help my child to come to know and love you as their Lord and Savior. Because I know at a certain point, our children are responsible for their own faith journey, right? But all I can do is ask that God guides them in that direction, right? And stirs their heart to want to seek Him. The second thing I pray for is that my children will learn to love and accept all people and that they will have a heart uh, of compassion and kindness and they will learn to love others in the same way that Jesus loves them. And the third and quite possibly most important thing I ask God for is to give me the same amount of patience and grace towards my kids as he gives towards his children, right? Because as a father and as a parent in general, there's no perfect playbook. Yes, we can read countless blogs, follow lots of social media influencers, but at the end of the day, it can be overwhelming on how we're supposed to raise good children. And the greatest teacher of parenting and the greatest father, in my eyes, is my Heavenly Father. So I can learn a lot from Him. And that's why I ask Him in my prayers to help me have the same grace and love towards my children as He has towards me. So my prayer for you today is that if you're feeling like an overwhelmed father or a stressed out parent, Seek God and His wisdom. Look at how He treats you. Look at how He has treated His children throughout the, the Bible, right? Always look to God for guidance. Pray to Him like I pray for my kids each night. Seek His strength during some of those difficult times being a father, right? As I'm speaking to some other dads out there, I'm sure you know uh, what it feels like sometimes to be overwhelmed, uh, to be confused, to feel inadequate. And uh, it can, it can, way heavy on our hearts but when you seek the lord ask him for strength and pray to him each day for your children and for yourself to be a good dad in the same way that he is a loving and amazing father to each of us well i'm glad you decided to join us here today at mclean church online uh, if this is your very first time here i want to welcome you i want to tell you that we're glad you're here we're glad that you're tuning in and choosing to make church a part of your busy schedule uh, we ask that you just uh, tell us more about yourself, right? You can click the connection card on this page if you're joining us uh, during our 9, 10, or 11 a.m. services on Sunday. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you just leave a comment in the comment section uh, and just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Maybe we can 
pray for you. Uh, or if you're listening on the radio, we're glad that you're driving along and enjoying your connection with our church and the presence of God right in your car today. Welcome to McLean Church Online. We really are so grateful that you're here. Hello, McLean Church, and welcome. I'm your friendly neighborhood, Spence. Over the last few weeks of worship, we've been exploring the words of Jesus from John 15, where he talks about himself being the vine, God being the gardener, and us all being the fruit-bearing branches. As we lift up our hearts together in worship today, we'd like to revisit his entire message as we sing his praises. He begins, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Just the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Bless your name, oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days, oh yes, I will. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same god who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out oh yes i will lift you high in the lowest valley yes i will bless your name stand against and I choose to praise to glorify glorify the name of all names and nothing can stand against and I choose to praise to glorify glorify the name of all names that nothing can stand against and I choose to praise to glorify, glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. 
you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You don't choose me, I choose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command, love each other. Standing here in your presence in a grace so relentless I am one. By perfect love, wrapped within the arms of heaven, in a peace that lasts forever, sinking deep in mercy. See, I'm wide awake, drawing close, stirred by grace, and all my heart is yours. All fear removed, I breathe you in, I lean into your love, oh, your love. When I'm lost, you pursue me. My head to see your glory, Lord of all, so beautiful. Here in you, I find shelter, captivated by the splendor of your face. My secret place, I'm wide away, drawing close, stirred by grace and all. Yours. All fear removed, I breathe you in, I lean into your love, oh, your so deep 
is washing over me. Your face is all I see. You are my everything. Jesus Christ, you are my one desire. Lord, hear my only cry to know you all my life. Your love so deep is washing over me. Your face is all I seek. You are my everything. Jesus Christ, you are my one desire. Lord, hear my only cry to know you all my life. Your love so deep is washing over me. Your face is all I seek. You are my everything. Jesus Christ, you are my one desire. Lord, hear my only cry to know you all my life. I'm wide awake, drawing close, stirred by grace and all. fear removed I breathe you in I lean into your love oh your love I invite you now to take a moment to be still before God and reflect on where you are right now in your walk with Jesus. If you feel like you are not securely attached to the vine that is Jesus and producing fruit, Ask God to lift you up and place you back on the vine. If you are bearing fruit in your life, ask God to give you the strength to stand firm on the vine. Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks we pray that as you cut and prune in our lives, that you would help us to stay out of the mud and muck of life. We pray that you would lift us up and give us strength. And we pray that we would bring glory to your name by loving each other. Amen. Run to the Father fall into grace I'm done with the hiding the reason to wait my heart needs a searching my soul needs a friend so I'll run to the Father again and again I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding the reason to wait. My heart found a searching, my soul found a friend. So I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again. Well, at this point in our services, it is time to take up our offering. Uh, again, if you're new to our church, if this is your first time tuning in online, we don't want you to give any money. We just want you to um, consider coming back, uh, consider connecting with myself as your online site pastor. Uh, you can certainly email me, cnorris at mcleanchurch.org so that we can offer to pray for you or connect you with someone uh, or something within our church, a ministry area, a volunteer opportunity, a life group, whatever it may be. Uh, we would love to learn more about you 
to, and that's all that we ask of you if this is your first time here. To our regular attenders though, you know how it goes. Uh, we are so grateful for your generosity and how you choose to give, doing it online, mailing in a check, whatever works best, we are grateful that you decide to support the ministry of McLean Church. Would you join us in a special Father's Day prayer uh, before we take up our offering and watch a special video? Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks for the dads in our lives. Fatherhood does not come with a manual and reality teaches it that some fathers excel and others sometimes struggle to be at their best. Yet we ask for your blessings for them and encouragement where it is needed. This Father's Day, God, we remember the many sacrifices that fathers make for their children and their families and the ways both big and small that they lift children to achieve dreams, thought beyond reach. We also remember those who have helped fill the void when fathers have passed away early or are absent. Grandfathers and uncles, brothers and cousins, teachers, pastors and coaches, and the women of our families. For those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. In your holy name we pray, O oh God, amen. The first thing my dad does when he gets up is go make the coffee. Okay, who wants coffee? I want some coffee. Okay, first I smash the beans. Then I mix them up. And then I pour some cream. And then I heat it up. And then I drink it. Here you go. This is delicious coffee. Thank you. Next he fixes the car. Run. Here you go. Oh, uh, nail. Um, light bulb. All done. Then he probably has to fix the sink, too. Hand me a hammer. Bang, bang, bang. Hand me a pipe. Hand me a popsicle. Why do you need a popsicle? Because it's delicious. He likes to cheer at my sports games. Yeah, kick that ball. Score a basket. Goal! Then he grills the food. What are you grilling us for dinner tonight? Hamburgers. Hot dog. Mac and cheese. Cheese. Mashed potatoes. Strawberries. Raspberries. Blackberries. Mmm, sounds great. Then he prays for dinner. Thank you for our cat. Thank you for our friends. And thank you for the world. The friendship never ends. Amen. After dinner, we played games. I played Uno. You want to play Uno? Sure. Yep. A blue five. I have a blue two. A green two. Draw four, 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 draw four. You have to draw 5,024 cards. Then he tells me a story at bedtime. Once upon a time, there was a dragon in the castles. He is a fire-breathing dragon and an ice-breathing dragon. And they all live happily ever ever after. The end. My dad always encourages me. I'm so proud of you. I'll always be there for you. I love you and Jesus loves you very much. You are a really great kid. Happy Father's Day to all the dads. You're the greatest. Yep, thanks, bye. See you later. Break a leg. <laughs> Well, at this time, I'd like to send things over to Pastor Brian Kelly for today's message. Pastor Brian, happy Father's Day to you. The stage is yours.
Happy Father's Day to all the dads who are joining us for this talk. You know, your role as a father is one of the most challenging and most vital roles in all of culture. Uh, thank you very much for taking your responsibility to fill this role well. As I start this talk today, uh, I recognize that I've been blessed in two ways. Uh, first, I was raised by a father who took his responsibility as a parent seriously and who did the job of parenting well. Uh, my father, who at 88 years old is still an active part of our church congregation, he provided me with a childhood of love, support, and limits. And he taught me the important things in life, like, like how to work hard, um, how to establish and keep a good name, uh, how to realize what was really important in life, uh, how to stay loyal to relationships and to communities, and, and how to live a life in which God was at the center. Uh, I love you very much, Dad, and I'm grateful for your life. I realize I've also been blessed uh, to uh, be a father. Uh, I've had the privilege of raising three children of my own, uh, Nathan, uh, Ansley, and Bria, all of whom I could not be more proud of. Uh, they are each so beyond me in their insight, their understanding, and their accomplishments. Uh, I look at all they've done with their lives thus far. Uh, my oldest, Nathan, is 32, and my youngest, Bria, is 26, and Ansley's right in the middle at 29. And, and I simply marvel at what they've done and accomplished. Uh, second only to my marriage, they are the greatest joys of my life. As a father, I've also been blessed to have a, a small part uh, in raising two other children, Kirsten and Anna, who each became a part of our family during their teenage years. Uh, they are both incredible and highly accomplished young women uh, who've taught me much about overcoming adversity, uh, living with tenacity, and seizing the opportunities that God places before us. Uh, both of these girls have overcome challenges that would have defeated many of us, and they are both living boldly into the lives God has prepared for them. Now, I'd like to think that my role as a dad uh, had some part in all uh, these children's successes. And I say that not in any way as a statement of, of pride or boasting, although I will gladly boast about all five of these kids. Uh, I make this statement rather uh, as a way of underscoring the vital role fathers play in raising successful children, a role that I'm afraid is often minimized, understated, or not fully realized by our culture. So today, as we continue our series, uh, if I could write a letter to me, uh, thank you, Brad Paisley, for the inspiration, I thought I'd use this occasion to, to reflect back on some things I've learned about being a father. Uh, most of these things I learned from my own father, although it took the experience with my own children to fully understand some of them. Uh, I offer them to you today as a, a way of encouraging, uh, inspiring, and helping all the fathers who are listening uh, become even better dads. So here are six ideas or suggestions I would put in a letter to me as a younger father. First is this, raise them to leave. Raise them to leave. Uh, in his groundbreaking book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, author Stephen Covey pointed out that successful people begin with the end in mind. Uh, successful parents do also. Uh, our goal as parents, uh, moms and dads, is to raise our children to be independent, responsible, and successful adults. Uh, our goal from day one is to prepare them uh, to fly from the nest. From the start, we are raising them to leave. This is a challenging perspective to embrace, 
yet it's the only perspective that can truly guide a successful approach to parenting. Uh, if, as a father, I'm not continually asking uh, when they're 5 and 9 and 16, how can I prepare them to leave? Then the chances are uh, when they're 18 or 22 or 30, they won't be ready to leave. So from the start, regularly ask yourself, am I preparing them to leave? And again, this work starts when they're three and four, uh, not 18 and 19. And I think this record work uh, requires us to do two basic things. Uh, first, it requires a constant cheering on of our children, uh, cheering them on into new opportunities. As fathers, it's our role and responsibility to continuously inspire our children to move into new experiences and environments. Uh, we do this even when we're secretly terrified of the thought of them stepping out of their present comfort zone. Uh, we as parents, we're always giving encouraging nudges onward, forward. Yes, you can do that. That would be an awesome opportunity. I think you should give that a try. But in this continuous pushing them out of the nest, it's important that we also give them a soft place to land when they step out and become disillusioned or wounded or fail. Uh, this soft place to land is not necessarily the couch in your basement. It's instead your love, your understanding, and your reassurance that you can go out there again. The struggle we have with letting our children go, with encouraging them forward, with, with nudging them to move beyond, it's a natural and understandable struggle. But to fail to overcome this natural struggle probably reveals something missing in us that our children cannot and should not be asked to replace. So as fathers, let's raise our children to leave and let's deal with whatever may exist inside of ourselves that would prevent us from encouraging, helping, challenging, and even insisting that they move beyond. The second thing I would say to my younger self as a parent is, Parent with love and limits. Parent with love and limits. Love and limits, uh, our children need both of them. Often, we give them one or the other. Choosing to become a father obligates us to unconditionally love our children. When you choose to become a parent, uh, you make a choice to unconditionally love the child you'll bring into this world. Uh, this choice is not optional. Uh, God, the Father, is the model of this unconditional love. Uh, we'll never match His standard, but He is the ideal. So if you want to know how to act as a father toward your children, consider how God acts as a father towards you. What God the Father shows us about unconditional love is that Love needs to be both modeled and communicated. Modeled and communicated. Uh, we love our children uh, by the way we act toward them and by the things we do for them. Uh, we're always acting in their best interests and we're always doing things on their behalf to promote their well-being and success. Uh, we, we make sure our children are well fed and appropriately clothed and have a ride to their baseball game as an act of love. But we also tell our children we love them. We use words. We say, I love you, and we write, I love you, because words matter. Uh, don't think uh, my kids will know uh, I love them because of what I do for them. Love requires actions and words, which is why God the Father both told us He loved us and demonstrated His love for us in the person and work of Jesus Christ. 
with words and deeds as fathers, we are obligated to show our children unconditional love. But we are also obligated to raise them with limits. My observation over the past few decades is that uh, many dads are doing really well with the love thing. Uh, I see dads using the words and doing the things that would assure their children that they are unconditionally loved, and that is great to see. But sometimes we think that raising our children in a loving way implies that we are to avoid setting limits on their behavior or actions, uh, specifically as it relates to their behavior that affects other people. Um, I'm afraid we've erroneously assumed that to be a loving, supportive, and encouraging parent means we're always prioritizing the interests, desires, and dispositions of our children over and above all else, even over the interests, desires, and dispositions of other people. So little Johnny is sometimes allowed to inconvenience, disrupt, or annoy others because we think to limit his actions would be seen somehow as discouraging his free expression or harming his self-image or treating him in an unloving way. But raising our children with love requires that we teach our children to love other people, which involves teaching them to exercise proper courtesy, manners, and respect toward other people. This will often require us to actively limit their actions and behaviors. So, uh, Johnny, you, you can't get up in the middle of the band concert to go out and get a drink of water because that is disrespectful to the people on stage who are performing. We're going to limit your actions as an expression of love. Uh, or, 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 Susie, uh, we wait until everyone has been served dessert and the hostess takes the first bite before we start eating our dessert because we want to show respect and love toward the person who prepared this meal. Uh, or, uh, Davey, uh, you, you may not interrupt when another person is speaking to me because that is discourteous both to them and to me, so I will not allow you to do it. Raising our children with love requires raising them with limits. We're not loving our children if we allow them to be ill-mannered, disrespectful, and discourteous people. So raise your children, raise them with love and limits. The third thing I would say to the younger uh, me is teach, teach your children the basics. Uh, the responsibility to teach our children uh, the basic skills they need for life, the skills they need uh, to leave, that responsibility rests with us as parents. And I think fathers have a unique opportunity to teach many of these skills. Um, do your children know how to shake hands with someone with a firm grip and a clear look in their eye? Uh, if not, teach them? Do they know how to be successful on a job uh, with basics like uh, showing up 10 minutes early, uh, anticipating what the boss might need next, or uh, moving with energy and a smile? If they don't know these things, teach them. Uh, do they know how to create a budget, uh, how to open a bank account, how, how to mail a letter? It's our job as parents to teach these things. How about how to change the oil in a car, check the tire pressure, or detail the exterior and the interior? What about cooking a meal, doing a load of wash, uh, ironing a shirt? <laughs> now you may be saying, I don't know how to do some of those things. So learn, and then teach your children. Uh, I always wanted my children uh, uh, to be so well-rounded uh, that they would be able to do everything from, uh, from changing the oil in their car, uh, 
uh, to being able to, to confidently order from the wine list in a fine restaurant. Well, I knew uh, how to change the oil in a car so I could teach them that, but I didn't know anything about wine, uh, so I bought a book. Uh, it was before the internet existed. <laughs> I, I learned about wine for myself, and then I taught them. Uh, how else will our children learn the basics? Uh, fathers, don't depend on the school or the church or, or their mom to teach them all these things. You teach them, even if you have to learn or relearn some of them yourself. Uh, teach them the basics. Number four, I'd say to my younger self, remember, little ears are listening. Your children are always watching and listening. So think carefully about what they're learning from what they see, and maybe more importantly, from what they hear. I'd sometimes find myself in a conversation with someone else that could be appropriately nuanced and put in perspective and understood by another adult, but which would communicate a whole different message to a child who was hearing me talk. How do your children hear you talk about other people and what is it teaching them about how they should view and perhaps treat those other people? Um, if you're always referring to your neighbor as that idiot, uh, then certainly in your child's mind, there's no reason to treat that idiot uh, with kindness or respect. There's certainly no need to love that neighbor as Jesus calls us to love ourselves. In this political season, uh, what do you say about politicians or public figures uh, that your children hear and you dismiss as just politics or just talk or just blowing off steam, but which your children are taking very concretely as the way to think about, talk about, and treat people whose political views you don't agree with? What do they hear you say about your, your job or your boss that is forming a perspective in them about how they should view work uh, or a future employer? What do they hear you say about their mom, uh, their siblings, uh, people they have come to believe are family and friends? What do they hear you say about them? How do you speak about them in conversation with them and in conversation with others about them? You may think of it as just talk, but remember the words your child hears from you are incredibly formative in the creation of their world and life view. Now, as dads, we won't always be perfect in this, but we must be thoughtful and when we haven't been thoughtful with our words, it's imperative to circle back with the words, I know you heard me say, but I shouldn't have said that. Because little ears are always listening. Two more. Give them a spiritual legacy. You know, if you really love your children, help them become aware of the God whose child they are. Uh, the greatest gift in life that we can give our children is a spiritual legacy. Fathers have a pivotal role in the creation of and the passing on of this legacy. Uh, it's a shame that so many men seem passive, reluctant, or uninterested in ensuring a spiritual heritage for their children. Um, you may not love yourself enough to consistently engage in spiritual practices, but I hope you love your children enough to engage in those practices with them and for them. Because a spiritual legacy is the greatest gift you can give a child. So, um, go to church. Uh, read your Bible. Pray each day. Uh, let them see you doing those things. Uh, uh, bring them uh, to McLean Kids. Involve them in serving. 
don't make these things optional or matters of convenience because the way a child learns the importance of such practices is through consistency. Uh, the way a spiritual legacy is built is through routine and rhythm. Now, I, I hope you consistently engage in spiritual practices because you understand their vital importance for your life. But if you don't see things that way, at least engage consistently in those practices for your children's sake. And one further piece of advice that um, my observations over the years um, call me to challenge you to. If you're raising children, uh, don't start switching from church to church. Uh, don't teach your children a consumer approach to spirituality. Don't, don't teach them that when you have a problem or disagreement or encounter something you don't like, you just walk away from relationships and communities. Uh, don't teach them that uh, their connection to God's family is no different from your connection to, to a retailer like Giant Eagle or Wegmans. Uh, spirituality is not a consumer commodity, so, so don't do things that would present it in their eyes in that way. Consistency and commitment, they're, they're, they're the foundation on which a spiritual legacy is built. Give that legacy to your children. Finally, I would say to my younger and present self, remember, you are always a dad. Uh, once a dad, always a dad. Once a father, always a father. The job doesn't stop when your children turn 18. I, I'm convinced that we always need fathers in our lives. At 58 years old, I still need my 88-year-old dad. Our children will always need us. Now, the role changes from the time they're five to the time they're 25, but the role and responsibility is still very real. As our children grow, uh, they need us as mentors and they need us as fans. Uh, they need fathers who will continue to cheer them on and celebrate their successes. Uh, the excitement with which we celebrated their preschool graduations is now transferred to, to celebrating their first jobs or buying their first houses. And our children need us as fathers uh, to be mentors. Uh, even though we'll often feel surpassed by our children in terms of their knowledge and accomplishments, our, our kids will always need us to say things like, uh, I remember when I was trying to buy my first house and, and it was tough to get financing. Or uh, I remember that stretch when I hated to go to work every day, but, but, but this is how I made it through. Or, or I know it's hard to keep up with all the things that have to be done when you're trying to get all, all the kids to bed every night, but, but hang in there. Mentors share their experiences, they, they tell their stories, they, they share their successes and their failures, and they offer their understanding. Our children will always need their dads. They'll always need us to be mentors and fans. Uh, are you filling that role for your adult children? To be a father is one of the greatest opportunities and responsibilities a man will ever have. Uh, to you who have undertaken that responsibility, thank you. You are changing the world, truly changing the world, by raising your children to be responsible, successful, and independent adults. You won't do the task perfectly, but you can do the task well as you realize the incredible opportunity that you've been given, and as you rely on God to help you. May God, the Father, inspire you and empower you to be a good dad. And remember, while you raise your children to leave, your influence and importance in their lives will never end. Happy Father's Day.
I was lost in shame, could not get past my blame until you called my name. I'm so glad he changed me, darkness held me down, Jesus pulled me out, I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad he changed me, see I'm now a new creation in Christ. The old is gone, there's the life. I live by faith, not by sight. There is a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. I've met the author of my story, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. Jesus opened my eyes, now I see the light. I'm so glad he changed me, now I'm walking free. I've got the victory, seeing all over me. I'm so glad he changed me, see I'm now a new creation in Christ. The old is gone, there's the life. I live by faith, not by a new name written down in glory and it's mine yes it's mine I've met the author of my story and it's mine yes it's mine there is a new name written down in glory and it's mine yes it's mine I've met the author of my story and it's mine yes it's mine oh, and i am who i am because the i am tells me who i am i am who i am because the i am tells me who i am i am who i am because the i am tells me who i am i am who i am because the i am tells me who i am Well, thanks for being with us here at McLean Church Online. It was so great to spend time with you. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I don't know what your plans are, but I plan on playing some catch with my son, grilling some food, and just enjoying time with my family. It's gonna be a wonderful day. I hope it's an awesome day for you as well. Please do stay connected with us. So many great things happening at McLean Church throughout the summer months ahead. Visit our website at mcleanchurch.org to learn more about all those amazing opportunities. Stay connected with us across social media platforms so you don't miss out on all the fun. Next week, we hope to see you right back here at McLean Church Online as Pastor Mike will be bringing the word, the special message on prayer. So we plan to see you again here next week at McLean Church Online. Happy Father's Day.